Welcome to video number seven on estimating with Excel for the small contractor. Uh, if you're still watching these videos, you either really want to build your own system or you're just uh, doing some uh, estimating voyeurism and you're watching in and to see how somebody else runs their office, sets up their job, sets up their bookkeeping system. Um, that's part of the reason I'm doing this is to uh, let you peek into how I do things, how I organize things. And I also want to teach the, uh, the novice or the beginner Excel person how you can go from pen and paper to doing things digitally. Um, the purpose of this video is also to uh, hopefully, hopefully we can stimulate some conversation on how we estimate, how we mark up materials, how we run our business, end of things. Um, what I like about forums is that it gives us an, an opportunity to talk to one another uh, about things we normally don't talk about. Uh, at the lumber yard, I don't talk to my competition about uh, how much you charge per hour or how much your markup is. Um, so in many ways a lot of us contractors live in isolation and don't have the opportunity to, to talk to one another and see how their business runs. So part of the purpose of these videos is to stimulate some conversation hopefully where we can talk about how you operate your business and how I operate my business and my purpose is to learn what to learn a better system than I've been using. <clears throat> Part of the reason I'm doing this is to, I've been developing this system for a number of years. Uh, my, my estimate worksheet has some flaws in it because it's been built a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, I'm kind of starting over from the ground up and trying to relearn some things, some lessons that I've learned over the years and try to reapply them and try to teach people at the same time. Now, at the end of the last video, I set up the cover sheet, and the cover sheet is going to set some things for uh, the other sheets. We have our job name, which is going to be filled in right here. Um, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to do, I'm going to put boxes or board, all borders um, on these cells. I also want to have. Uh, what I do frequently with mine is areas or cells that need input. Um, I put them in yellow. I don't know why. Uh, this cell is going to control our job name. Now when I type in uh, my job name here, it's going to show up here on my Jones job. On my estimate letter, it's going to be the name for the address. Uh, on the bill worksheet, it's going to show up here. And on the invoice, it's going to show up here. That way I can type it in uh, one place. I can type the name, the street, uh, the dates of the invoice, the date of the estimate, all of my markups. I can do that in, in one place and control it over all of these. I'm going to uh, briefly show you what my estimate worksheet looks like. Uh, this is my estimate worksheet. I've got uh, estimate worksheet, materials, uh, letter, one bill worksheet, and then I have, a, I have a, my default setting is to have two estimate worksheets and five bill worksheets and five invoices. And then I've got an invoice summary at the end. Um, I'm just working on a system where I can uh, have a drop-down box so that I can find the names of these uh, of various customers I've used in the past because I frequently work for them again. When I type in her name, then her address will show up. That's my current um, that's my current project. Okay, I'm going to go back to our uh, YouTube. What we're going to do is name cells. Um, this is going to be our job name and instead of writing the name in here I'm going to name this cell and when you name a cell or name a range um, if, 
it, there can't be any spaces. So if you want to put a space in between words, you generally put in an underscore. You, you type it in up in this box. It's got a name, I suppose. Uh, and then you have to press enter. If you don't press enter, it, what did that do? Oh, that took me to this is this shell. This one's open. I'm going to get rid of that. No, I don't want changes to that. Okay, I'm going to go back to naming it because what I what I did is I put in job name and it looked for a job name in a sheet that was already open. Okay, job. name enter this is going to be address enter this is going to be um, city state oh I did it in the wrong space place I uh, I have a problem with doing these. I am not real good at naming cells. And that's part of the reason I'm rebuilding my worksheet is because I've got a lot of improper names or too many names. Um, okay, not state. I want to go city underscore state. Press enter. I rarely keep the uh, email in this anymore. I rarely keep the phone number anymore. All the phone numbers are in my cell phone. Um, all the emails are in my email program. Uh, so I rarely keep those anymore. Um, this is going to be our job description. Um, I'll come back up here to name the cell. I better call it job description. and press enter. I've already done estimate date. I've already done, I did some of these things before and invoice date so you didn't have to watch me. Uh, contingency, sales tax. Let's see, I got materials markup, labor markup. Oh, I didn't do crew hour rate. I did one, whatever I did with crew hour rate, I screwed up. Okay, don't type there, Rich. Type up here. Crew underscore our shucks, underscore rate. Press enter. So the way we're going to use this is we're going to go to our estimate worksheet. This cell, we're going to press equals. Come back to our work crew worksheet. Job name. Press enter. Now I'm going to go back to our job name. I'm going to call this Anderson. Okay. So now my job name is Anderson there. My estimate letter. I'm going to go to my uh, the name that's going to show up on the window envelope. I'm going to press equals. Come back to cover sheet. Press enter. Now I go back to my, see my name Anderson's there. I'm going to go to uh, my bill worksheet. I'm going to press equals my cover sheet Anderson. Invoice, go to my name that's going to show up in the window envelope. I'm going to press equals, go back to cover sheet, press Anderson. Then I'm going to do the same thing for uh, I'm going to do the same thing f with uh, street address and city and same thing with the invoice street address and city. I'm going to this top section here is largely my customer information, my date of ad estimate, my invoice. Down here is my settings for contingency, sales tax, labor. Um, these first these are all going to be percentages. I better put them in a percentage. Um, let me. I got to do something here with a screencast. I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to press. Uh, I want 20% uh, markup on uh, 
or I want 20% contingency, but if I don't have that um, percentage in there, now watch what happens. Now that's 2,000%. In Iowa, we're 7% sales tax, materials markup, I'm going to go 20%, labor markup, I'm going to go 10%. Now I'm going to have to go back and correct this and just put in 20%. Now that it knows that it's a percentage, it reads my input differently. Uh, this contingency is going to be work used only in the estimate worksheet. The sales tax is going to be used in the ex estimate worksheet and the bill worksheet. Materials both. Labor markup in both. Crew rate in both. Now I've already named some cells. So these, these two cells here, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to get rid of those names. In order to do that, I go to Formulas, go to Name Manager, my Crew Rate. I want to delete that name. Yes, I do. And um, I want one man. That's a different spot. This is alphabetical order. One man. Delete. OK close. Now I'm going to come to uh, my contingency. I'm going to press equal. Go back to my cover sheet. My contingency is right here. Press enter. Go to my sales tax. Press equals. Contingency or my sales tax is here. Press enter. Markup on materials. I'm going to press equals. Come back to my cover sheet. Okay, materials markup right here. Press enter. So when I click on this cell, it'll say it equals contingency. This one equals sales tax. This one equals materials markup. Um, over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Equals. See. You might want to notice here, everything says name because I've gone up here and changed my uh, formulas. Or I've changed the name in those and it screwed up everything. We'll correct that in a few minutes. Sales tax equals cover sheet, or sales tax here, enter. I mark up on materials, press equals, come to my cover sheet, and I'm going to press enter. Um, my crew rate, I'm going to press equals, go to my cover sheet, crew rate, right there, enter. And that, since I don't, since I haven't entered anything in crew rate, uh, nothing shows up here. One man rate, I'm going to press equal, come back to cover sheet, press enter. Now I'm going to come back to my cover sheet. Uh, okay, my crew rate is going to be $100 an hour. My one man rate is going to be $50. Uh, just to keep everything straight, I will put those as dollars. Now I come back to my estimate worksheet, and it still doesn't like what I did. We're going to have to rebuild that formula. Equals this times crew rate. Enter. And I could just fill that out all the way down. Now, if I was uh, an Excel expert, I probably would have built this sheet and not made that mistake in the beginning. Um, but I've been doing the, this set of videos. You can pull off to the, you can take what's here. You can pull off to the side of the road and say, "Rich, this is enough Excel for me. I don't need any more. Just give me the assessment worksheet, and I'm happy." Um, so when you start getting into to naming cells, things get a little bit more complicated. Obviously, my labor subtotal is goofy. Oh, that's because of my uh, something's wrong here. Well, what's, what's happening here? Crew rate per hour, something's not working. Let's rebuild that again. 
equals 